Can we grow crops in Martian soil? That's a question I asked in a recent video of mine and the answer actually turned out to be yeah, or at least that it's probably possible. With a bit of tweaking of the soil and assuming you've figured out where to get a good supply of liquid water from and that you're growing the crops in a controlled indoor environment. What's pretty cool is that Martian soil has actually been found to contain all of the nutrients needed for a plant to grow. But how do we know this? I mean, unlike the moon, no samples of Martian soil, which is technically called regolith, have even been returned to Earth. Orbiters, landers and rovers like those of the Viking and Pathfinder missions gave us our first understanding of what Mars' surface was made of and they led to NASA JPL developing the JSC Mars 1 Martian Soil Simulant in 1998 that aimed to closely mimic what was found on the Martian surface. Our simulants have a range of uses like testing out new tools, testing out new handling methods and testing out ways to make use of the material itself. But after a while, some experiments with the Martian soil simulants showed that they lacked certain properties of Martian soil, which led to the development of newer simulants. And which leads me to these boxes. Inside these boxes are 12 kilos of Mojave Martian simulant, or MMS, provided by the Martian Garden in Texas. So having made a video previously about if it's even feasible to use Martian soil to grow crops, the next logical step is to try to actually grow something. So I'm going to try to grow a Martian salad here on Earth. Now whilst I'm getting everything set up, now would probably be a great time to ask the question, how do they even create this stuff? Our simulants are basically crushed blends of Earth materials, so the whole process really revolves around finding places on our planet with a good supply of material that has similar properties to Martian soil. The Martian surface is covered in soil that has a key ingredient of basalt, which is a dark, iron-rich volcanic rock. The original Martian soil simulant used weathered volcanic ash from an area near Mauna Kea in Hawaii. But this stuff, MMS, uses basalt rock that's found in an ancient volcano in the western Mojave Desert, which has a very similar mineral makeup to what's found on Mars. They take boulders and rocks of this basalt, which are then crushed into smaller and smaller particles, resulting in a range of sizes from fine powder to gravel. It's then sifted multiple times to separate it into coarse, fine and superfine grades of simulant. The simulant is missing an important component of Martian soil though, toxic perchlorate compounds. Now on Mars, these could be lethal to crops and to the humans that eat those crops, but luckily for us, there are a range of different methods for getting rid of them. All right, now I've got everything set up and ready to go. I've got two germination pod trays split into four columns. Column one contains MMS with a bit of fertilizer. Column two contains MMS with nothing added. And for comparison, we've got good old earth soil in column three. And column four contains nothing but a water retaining sheet. I'm using four different varieties of microgreen plants, which are essentially just plants that can be harvested really early on. I've got pea plants, sunflowers, cress, and radish. And now it's really just a waiting game. But let's face it, even if these things grow, they really wouldn't be keeping me full. If we're wanting to stay on Mars for extended periods of time, we're gonna need to figure out a way to generate some high calorie food, seeing as it'll just be too heavy to bring with us. Some researchers like Dr. Viga Varmelink of Wageningen University have managed to use Martian soil simulant and grow a heap of different vegetables like tomatoes, carrots, and green beans. And after having a quick chat with him, I found out that they've even managed to grow some proper potatoes. I'm just growing microgreens because they're quick and they're easy, so if I screw up, it'll be cheap and easy to try again. But hopefully it'll all be good and they'll actually grow, which it looks like they might. It's a few days since planting the seeds now and look at what we've got. Everything has started to germinate and I can already taste the sweet, sweet salad of victory. And what led to this stage is actually pretty fascinating. The seeds I planted a few days back were lying dormant, where their growth has stopped and metabolism has almost completely stopped as well. Seeds that are dormant stay that way until conditions are right for them or they receive a specific environmental cue. For instance, in areas where wildfires are common, seeds can require intense heat or smoke, which acts as a sign that other competing vegetation has probably just been cleared by fire. 
When germination begins, they take in a large amount of water in a process known as imbibition, and the seeds expand and rupture their outer coats. Metabolic changes inside the seed are triggered and enzymes begin digesting food stores, leading to the plant embryo resuming growth. The embryonic root makes an appearance first to access water, then the shoot tip needs to break through and emerge from the soil. Now different plants do this in different ways, but once they do, the first true leaves can develop and start photosynthesizing, allowing the plant to grow more and more. And eventually, this will lead to a full grown plant. But I'll be harvesting my microgreens at a much earlier stage than that, at a stage that they're actually getting pretty close to now. It's a few more days later, and now we've got shoots properly growing and can start to see the differences in everything. What's interesting is seeing that the seeds in the fertilized simulant seem to not be doing well at all. Now there are a few reasons this could be happening, but really what this probably means is that I screwed up and used way too much fertilizer. But what's really clear is that the plants in the Martian soil simulant are growing a lot slower than the plants in the earth soil. And this is something I expected and something that we would probably expect from real Martian soil. You see, even though Martian soil has been found to contain all the nutrients needed for a plant to grow, some of them are probably not gonna be very abundant or even in accessible forms. So it will have to be tweaked by adding in micro and macroscopic organisms and probably using some forms of fertilizer to ensure proper nutrient availability and nutrient cycles. This will lead to long-term sustainable use of soil and will lead to plants that are nice and healthy when you're about to harvest them, which is what I'm about to do with my microgreens right now. It's now 14 days since I planted all of these microgreens and here they are. Alright, so it might not look all that impressive, but it's still time for me to make my Martian salad. But wait, I've got to try and make this look good. Okay, so it's not exactly the biggest feast, but I'm actually pretty happy about this. I mean, I grew this in a Martian soil simulant, and now I'm about to taste it. Hmm. I mean, it's pretty leafy with a little bit of pepper. I probably wouldn't recommend it. Now clearly, this was not a real experiment, and clearly I made some mistakes in my methods. But there are some real scientists working hard trying to make growing crops on Mars a reality. A lot of these experiments are less about can we stick a seed in some Martian soil and just grow a plant, and more about, okay, what's our starting point and what do we need to tweak to make it better? Even though we might still be at least decades away from even landing on Mars, let alone settling on it for long periods of time. Research done now will make sure that we're as ready as we can be, and it could even lead to better agricultural practices here on Earth. So I'm probably gonna try this whole experiment again, but I think I'm gonna try grow something maybe just a little bit bigger this time. Now I'm gonna get back to my absolute feast. 